So those are a few more options that you have. Now we're getting closer to 9090, but again, worth noting that we haven't gotten there yet. It's not the only option, it's not the best option. So this is now like a modified version of a 9090, right? So the demands are less on my lower body when I've got both of my knees here bent. So I've got this foot touching this leg. I've got this leg bent. I can have it bent to 90 degrees. I can offload it a little bit. Again, if you've got any knee issues, you might find it helpful to offload it a little bit. But even here, we can go kind of a modified 90-90, take the pressure off this front leg by having that knee bent. And then you can do exactly what we just did in that other one whereby we're gonna try and get that glute to drop down to the ground or get heavier through the backside that we're stretching to help get into a stretch. That might be enough for you. This position might be too hard for you as is. You might have to lean back in this one and that's fine too, especially if you've got pinching in the front. You then might need to open that front side up, bring yourself back a little bit, hang out here or depending on your arm to torso length, you might find it helpful to actually have a few blocks behind you. And then you might find your hip stretch here and then you could do your pails and rails in this position and that's fine as well. You could even go so far as actually coming back down onto your elbows again if you need. You can play with all of those things. You can open up the front, you can close off the front. You can bring this leg back a little bit more, you can bring it forward a little bit more, you can play with your knee angle. It's all fine, just make sure that you're finding it in your hip and we're not getting any pinching in the front of the hip as a consequence. So you're searching for that sensation somewhere kind of in the back and side of your hip. Now, if I were to do pails and rails here, it's gonna look very similar to what it would in a full 90-90, which is that I'm gonna think about spinning my thigh outwards to get out of the stretch, which means my foot, as a consequence, will be driving down into the ground, but my knee will not be lifting because I need to stay in the stretch, and I need to be mindful of what my pelvis is doing and make sure that as I push down, I don't start drifting off of that pelvis and coming towards my other leg again. I'm trying to keep that anchored the whole time. When you switch and do your rails contraction, you're then gonna think spin your thigh inwards, which as a consequence will make your foot lighter on the ground. But again, you need to make sure that your pelvis does not move. Or you could do the reverse of that. Meaning instead of just thinking drive your foot down, don't let the pelvis move, you could actually think, okay, I'm just gonna leave the knee where it is. I'm not gonna necessarily think about making that foot come up. That's gonna stay the same, but instead I'm gonna try and get heavier into my hip and once again try and turn, not my upper body, because I can turn my upper body without manipulating my pelvis, but turn my pubic bone slightly towards that side and it's gonna be subtle, it's not a big thing, just that little tweak will go a long way at the level of your hip. So again, you could also do a combination of both of those things. Once again, trying to think, lift my foot up, don't let the knee move as I sit heavier into that hip. So you can play with all of it.